So I define trauma, I try to break things down so that I'm not using a lot of jargon. So I define trauma as any horrific or life-changing event that alters you mentally, physically, spiritually, or energetically. And so what that does is that it interrupts your flow. It stops you from, you know, continuing on the path or journey that you were already on. It's something that is life changing. So it, it's something that impacts you to the point that, you know, again, it can cause you to have to change your regular schedule programming. Hey, it's your imaginary best friend, Finch. And I know at times life can seem hard and you can feel stuck with no valuable answers and nowhere to go. Listen, I have a host of secrets and recipes that will not only help you enhance your lifestyle, career, relationships, and finances, but also help get your ass off the fence. And just because you're not where you want to be doesn't mean you're not where you're supposed to be. So let's go do the work. This episode starts now. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it is Tuesday, so you know what time it is. It is get your ass off the fence time, and uh, I'm Finch. We're ready. We are ready. Excited. Hey, I am excited about today being Tuesday, and I get the chance to hang out with you guys for the next hour or so. Uh, Just having a great conversation. Today, we're talking about what the fuck is your problem? You're probably looking like, oh, everybody just got shocked right now. Uh, I get it. I get it. Uh, But it's a great thing because if you've ever dealt with trauma in your life, this is the place you want to be right now. So I want you guys to go out, go tell a friend and tell a friend and tell a friend to tune in right now because we got the great doctor in the house to help you guys maneuver through your trauma. It's nothing like trauma that, and I think so many times we've talked about it so many times on this show, things that happen in our lives that are traumatic in a sense. We don't know how that shapes us. And so we go through our lives feeling and operate a certain way and not realizing we haven't dealt with some, some past traumas, some childhood traumas, some adult traumas. But needless to say, we have somebody here tonight that's going to help you get your ass off the fence concerning your trauma and help you heal or get on the healing journey at least uh, because you we all know the work is up to you so if you don't do the work then you don't get the results all right guys my guest tonight is known as the healing alchemist those are big college words in case you didn't know big college words she specializes in healing trauma by focusing on mind body and spiritual healing she's the author of the best-selling book what the fuck is your problem becoming an active worker in healing your trauma and she's here to help you get your ass off the fence so you can enhance your life and live free and we're getting one-on-one with her right now (laughs) dr fanike is here i love hello hello (laughs) Hey, how are you doing? (laughs) I'm great. I'm great. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Have a great week. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Book launch was on Saturday, and so still coming off the high of all of that, and you know, just continuing to educate people on their trauma and healing the trauma and what what it looks like and how it shows up and you know all that great stuff. So great week so far. All right. First time author. Yes, by myself. So Ooh. I have been a part of, um, you know, other books where I've contributed. But for me to be the sole author, this is definitely the first time. And it's so exciting. And, you know, the words cannot <laughs> really describe it. And it's so crazy because people think, you know, yeah, I'm going to write a book. And right. that's it. <laughs> it doesn't quite work. <laughs> that part. <laughs> All right, so, so, so when you when you talk about trauma, uh, a vast majority of people I've learned have no idea what that is. So let's start with what is trauma? So I define trauma. I try to break things down so that I'm not using a lot of jargon. So I define trauma as any horrific or life changing event that alters you mentally, physically, spiritually, or energetically. And so what that does is that it interrupts your flow. It stops you from, you know, continuing on the path or journey that you were already on. It's something that 
is life changing. So it it's something that impacts you to the point that, you know, again, it can cause you to have to change your regular schedule programming. <laughs> that's how that's how I define trauma. Okay. So so in your in your profession, I would have to assume that at some point you had to deal with your own trauma in order to help other people deal with theirs. And when you think about your own trauma, what was it that allowed you to, number one, recognize that you had a traumatic experience that you hadn't dealt with? But more importantly, how did you get your ass off the fence and get over that hump on your journey to healing as well? Great question. So a lot of my trauma started in childhood. I, from the age of four, as that's the earliest that I can remember, I witnessed a man get murdered looking out the window of my apartment building. And wow. then from there, witnessing domestic violence in the household. And I remember the last episode of my dad assaulting my mom. And he was like, hey, I'm going to come back and get you. And he was leaving. And he was like, I'm coming back to get my daughter. And I'm going to kill you, bitch. And so he leaves. And I'm thinking you know, yay, he's leaving because I was scared for my mom. But at the same time, I definitely thought that he was coming back to get me. The next day I go to school as if, you know, nothing had happened. Get to my grandmother's house because my mom, she worked 12 to 14 hour days. Get there. My mom is there, which is weird because she's never at my grandmother's house when I get off of school. And she calls me in the kitchen and she says the three words that changed my life forever, which is your dad died. And so all of this by the age of six and I, for years, held on resentment, anger, uh, feelings of abandonment. You know, the last words that my dad said to me was that he's coming back to get me. And Mm -hmm. so then I never saw him again. So abandonment, uh, you know, fear, difficulty with relationships, uh, distrust for others, not believing in, you know, other people's words, difficulty receiving love and giving love. uh, And then all of those pieces, I carry that for years. I I self-harmed as a teenager. Uh, just had a lot of, you know, anger issues and rage issues. Get to college. Mm-hmm. I'm at, and I'm right before I graduate. I take psych one on one. I saved that course for like the last. <laughs> I don't want to take it, right? <laughs> and now look at me. I'm a therapist. So, <laughs> so right before I graduate, I take psych one on one, and we're talking about trauma. And the mm-hmm. teacher talks about, you know, how trauma happens and how trauma can trigger, you know, violence in us and how it can, tra- uh, how it can trigger, you know, difficulty with our emotions and expressing our emotions and our feelings and all this other stuff. And it started to all sound, you know, really familiar. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, that's what's been going on with me. So I kind of, right. you know, connect those dots. And, you know, from there, I was like, okay, I want to work on it, but nothing major. I was still a kid. You know, I'm 21. I'm still technically a kid and, you know, nothing major, didn't really do anything consistent. So, you know, I'm like therapy here and, you know, a little bit of healing work here and nothing major. Um, I hit about 34 and I go to China to train some doctors and some psychiatrists and some nurses. And I'm gone for like three weeks, come back home and no one's there. It's just me in the apartment. Mm -hmm. And I had a realization that, you know what? I would have loved for someone to have been there to be like, welcome home. I missed you so Mm. much. (laughs) You know, (laughs) whoa, where have you been? You know, (laughs) and they weren't there. Um, And so I realized, you know, then at that place that I wasn't really happy with my life. You know, I had the degrees. I was making good money. I was traveling. You know, I had all those things, but Mm -hmm. something was missing. And that was when I decided, hey, you need to, you really need to heal this stuff. Like you really got to work on it. So I devoted a year to really going hard, you know, and, and really focusing on my healing. And I mean, I was, I was boxing, eating healthier. I'm journaling, I'm meditating, I'm doing yoga, I'm going to therapy, I'm doing all these things and I was healing, but I was tired and exhausted. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you was wore out with, with the journey itself. Wore out, but it taught me something. And okay. it taught me that one, to truly heal, because keep in mind, I'm about 34 now. All yep. this stuff happened from four to six, right? Mm-hmm. Plus other stuff had already, you know, happened in it, but that was like the core. So almost 30 years later, it's been sitting there for 30 years. It's been evolving. The energy of it has been changing. It's been latching on. You know, I, I like to think of trauma like um, venom 
and mm-hmm. Venom, you know, like the the black, <laughs> how he like attaches onto stuff and and gets a host. That's how I'd like to look at trauma. And so it had, you know, attached onto certain pieces and it had attacked my relationships and it had attacked my business and it attacked my thinking about finances and it attacked, you know, my friendships It attacked, you know, it was, it was attacking all these different pieces. And so I learned that to truly heal from it, it required me to be focused on healing mentally, physically, energetically, and spiritually, right? Because like I said, it was working and it was great. But I also learned that, hey, maybe you went through all of this stuff because you're supposed to help other people. Mm. And so that was when I really narrowed my niche to working with women, uh, specifically around healing those trauma um, energy blocks. And I was able to design a program, right, that offered all of those different healing pieces, but from one person so that Mm. they wouldn't be tired and exhausted from their healing like I was. So So, it was great. Okay. So so when you talk about it affecting your relationships, you talked about it affect affecting your your finances uh, and all those things. Tell me specifically, how did how did you recognize or what what types of things you noticed that was a, it was affecting your relationships? Now, are we talking about romantic relationships, friendships, family dynamics or all the above? All of the above. So, you can't really separate them. Um, people think that people think that, you know, I show up in my love relationship one way and I show up in my friendships or with my family another way. And it's not true. Um, so you can't really separate them, right? Because you can't, you can't really, you know, categorize or, or, or move your emotions around based on the person. People think that, but it's not really true. So the things that I was noticing is I was lashing out at people. I was very quick tempered. So very, you know, like, um, there was an anger there. Uh, I noticed that in relationships, I had a really short tolerance for, you know, people and things. And, um, I would just leave a relationship. So there would really be no closure for the other person there. You know, I, I've had, you know, several proposals and I just love you and, you know, all of these things. And I couldn't quite return it. You know, like I, I never was able to really show up in those relationships. And then when it came to my friendships, there was always a, you know, distrust, you know, what mm-hmm. I couldn't never really let my, let my guard down to say, you know, yeah, this is really my friend. I really need to, you know, be all in and, and help them and, you know, go out on a limb for them. Um, with my family, the way that it showed up was that because I witnessed my mom be abused, I became the protector. You know, and, and a part of that was because I'm also the youngest child, but a part of it is that I determined in my brain that it was my fault because if uh, I wasn't alive, then my dad wouldn't have a reason to abuse my mom. Um, my dad wouldn't be there. You know, he wouldn't wow. be trying to get hit me. So as a, ch- from childhood, you know, up until adulthood, I had convinced myself that it was my fault. And so because of that, I became like this protector around my family. And so I sac- you know, it was a lot of sacrifices. So again, I was in school, I was working, you know, I was the one, is anybody need anything? I was taking care of people, you know, financially, emotionally, mentally, um, just trying to show up because I always felt like I had to overcompensate for mm-hmm. the fact that I existed. And so that's what my trauma brain had kind of, you know, told me. So I think what happens is when we experience, you know, those types of trauma, they can show up in so many places financially. My trauma came from seeing my mom work 12 to 14 hour days. And in my head, oh, for me to take care of myself, I have to work hard, right? You got to, you got to work. And, and, you know, we hear it, you know, you hear it, Mm -hmm. but you know, I got to get in grind, you know, and, and, um, my eyes never see the back of my eyelids and, you know, we, we have created this culture and what that is, is it's financial trauma. And we don't even realize it, but we've created a culture of hustle and grind because that's the only way that you can quote unquote be successful, but that's not true. Right. So there were different, you know, pieces. And what really helped me was for that year that I was telling you about, I really went into like kind of solitude and I spent a lot of time by myself a lot. And I, I started this tradition where, you know, every month I would pick a thing and I would work on it. And so as things were coming up, because the other thing is that trauma causes these layers. And so there's layers to the healing. You know, you can work on one thing and then it exposes something else. And then you work on that thing and then it exposes something else, you Mm -hmm. know, because it's layered. And so 
I, I was able to have that time to really dig through and get to know myself and start to really understand how it, was, how it had impacted me. Now, are you talking about layers like the Taco Bell seven layer burrito type of layers? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you, know, right. you, you tackle one layer and then you're like, oh, shoot, there's another one. <laughs> there's another one. Yeah. All right. So, so you talked about disappearing in relationship. Now, we talk about he comes home or he comes over, all your stuff gone. Like, what, what got, when you say you just used to disappear out of relationships, mm -hmm. what do you actually, what did you actually do? So it was a more of an emotional detachment. Um, I right. remember my ex and we, he ran into some issues. He wound up moving in with me mm -hmm. and he was like, you know, you're going to be my wife. And, you know, and I really, really cared about him. And I remember after about 10 to 11 months, you know, our le that lease was up. So I was moving and I pretty much was like, I don't think that you should move with me. I want to just move by myself. So we wound up breaking up. And I, you think? <laughs> that was me. It was like by a year or before uh -huh. I'd be like, okay. And it, a part of it was honestly, I would feel myself getting too close. Mm -hmm. And when I would feel myself getting too close and, you know, I'm starting to let my guard down. Oh no, it's time to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is, you know, this is not going to work. I remember my childhood boyfriend who we were best friends from the time I was nine and he was 13 and uh, we had grown up and, you know, then started dating and he proposed to me about, I think two times. And I said, no, both times, but you know, I remember just breaking his heart, you know, just, mm -hmm. this is all right. Well, um, I'm going to leave and <laughs> go to Atlanta and, you know, pretty much this is not going to work. And so, <laughs> so, um, you know, and uh, for, and I apologize to everyone that's listening. <laughs> Why are you apologizing? It has already occurred. Yes, I know, I know, but you know, a, a part of it is that a lot of times, you know, we have, we're broken. Uh -huh. you know, we, we have things about us and we don't even realize, you know, how they're showing up and how they're impacting us and, and, and impacting other people because right. it doesn't just affect us. It affects the people that are in our lives as well. Right. Now, now, when you think about how far you've come and you're looking at where it is you, you desire to go, you, you just currently uh, recently released the book. Uh, we got to get into uh, real quick why you titled it. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck is your problem? Uh, I, I get the part about becoming an active worker in healing your trauma. And I think one of my questions has to be, how can someone become an active architect in their own healing if they are unaware of the fact that they need to be healed? Because you, you're talking about a host of traumas that occurred in your life. But there's a there's a great number of and being that you said you help women. Uh, there's a great number of men and women in our society mm -hmm. right now. I mean, mm -hmm. high percentage of them that don't even recognize mm -hmm. that trauma, past past traumas is the yeah. cause of why they're not able to function or show up or stay committed in relationships, why they have anger issues, uh, why they do a host of things that they do that are not healthy for them. But when they are drowning that much in that sea of, of trauma, how do they become an active architect in order for them to get on that journey of healing? What, what, what are some about well, three, three things that you would recommend for them? I, I am a huge proponent of therapy. I think that everyone should see a therapist and primarily because prior to COVID, seven out of 10 adults in the United States experienced at least one traumatic event in their life. That was prior to COVID. Okay. Now that we've experienced COVID, <laughs> I think it's close <laughs> to about 10 out of 10, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, so knowing those numbers, I think that everyone should see a therapist and primarily because a therapist is more of like a sounding board. It's not really to, you know, not, let me, let me distinguish between mental illness and then mental health. And so it's kind of like, you know, you think about your doctor, right? So you go to your doctor for checkups, right? And mm -hmm. Because you want to make sure that your physical health is where it's supposed to be. Well, mental health kind of works the same way, or at least it should. So we okay. kind of have stigmatized it where it doesn't, but it should. And so I would definitely say that having some type of mental health professional in your life that you can go to, you know, just to make sure that your mental health, you know, stays up to par or that, you know, that they can help you to identify, hey, you may want to look at this or, you know, just to have someone to talk to that's outside mm -hmm. of your circle, right? 
Right. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that when it comes to becoming an active worker, a lot of it has to do with de- making the decision to heal. Like you, healing is a choice. It's not really, you know, you can't do it unless you really want to do it. So one of my prerequisites for even working with me on a level on that level is that you have to be ready because it's going to be life changing and you're going to have to do some things that, you know, are going to be uncomfortable. Why? Because uh, we're, we're, we get comfortable in the stuck, you know, we get comfortable Mm. in our stuff. We get comfortable in, you know, the things that are not necessarily the best for us, but it's comfortable. So we just kind of keep doing it. Right. So Mm. when you come to work with me, we're going to have to change some things. And so I need you to be ready for those transformations and those changes. So that would be the second thing. This, the third thing is understand that the people that are meant to help you are tools. So they're part of the tools, right? So what I mean by that is that it's like, it's like having a gym membership and then saying, hey, I want a personal trainer. And so you can go to the gym and by yourself and you can right. put yourself in your own regimen. And yeah, you, you, may, you may do great. But <laughs> having that coach or that trainer that's there, right, when you get there, probably going to increase your likelihood of, the, of you doing even better, right? So the mental health professionals, right, if you look at them like they're tools and then you open yourself and open your mind up to receive, you know, using different tools and different modalities. So like I said, for me, I was boxing at the time. I was eating, um, I was eating great. I mean, very, very lean. I mean, very, very clean food, right? Um, I actually had a chef that was like preparing my food and like packaging it up for the week and like all that good stuff. Um, I was going to therapy. I was meditating. I was journaling. Um, So that's the piece that I, the third piece is that being open to working on all of you, right? And not just focusing on one part because again, people think, yeah, the tra- I, I had some trauma, so I'm just going to work on the mental health piece. No, it doesn't work like that. You know, like I said before, it latches on, you know, that venom. It tags, mm-hmm. it latches itself on the, all these different pieces. So you have to be open to healing yourself holistically at the same time. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to give us a follow, rate us, and leave a comment because we'd love to hear your thoughts. Until next time, get your ass off the fence.